Our purpose this afternoon is to welcome you. And let me say, firstly, we have uh, people in other classrooms because we couldn't fit everybody into this. Usually this is full, but we wanted to keep people distant. So there are people in other classrooms. You can ask questions uh, going through the chat function. And uh, we have a, a really uh, a excellent young person down here in the name of Bo, who uh, will read your questions if you have any from there. Please don't worry about that. Equally, I want to congratulate all of you. This is a very competitive school to get into. And the fact that you're all here is a testimony to the fact that you're above average and well done. But what you're also going to discover as we talk is that in order for us to honor the investment you're making, I don't see you as students, I see you as a co-investor. And you're a co-investor in your education. You're investing time, treasure, talent, and four years of your life to make sure that you get a world class education. And let me tell you, you will get one. But in order for you to get that, you have to be here, you have to pitch up, you have to do the work. And that's one of the reasons that I first meet you as a leader. First message success is only about 5% inspiration and it's 95% perspiration. Another way of saying that is, you have to work hard. And if you don't work hard, you're going to struggle. I know too many people that were very talented, had all the capacity, but didn't do the work. And I can promise you this, if I was asked, what would I rather you had talent or hard work and discipline and work ethic? I would say, yeah, I want you to have some talent, but I would rather you had more discipline and hard work and ethic than just talent alone. Typically, when you've got talent, it can make you lazy. Do you know that? Because things come to you easily. And then suddenly when stuff you can't deal with comes to you, you can't deal with it, and then you get into trouble. So please remember that. Secondly, this is just a very quick way to show you that attitude really matters. If you do knowledge and you have hard work, that's not quite there either. Because you will notice that knowledge gives you 96%. Hard work gives you 98%, but the amazing thing is, is that attitude gives you 100%. So the message for you there is quite simple. You may have the talent. You may to some degree do the hard work, but if you don't come to uh, any uh, challenge with the right attitude, you may still not be successful. And I want you to understand as we start with academic career, sir, and as we begin our partnership as co-investors, we want you to get knowledge. We want you to work hard. But most importantly, I want you to have the right attitude. And the right attitude is realizing you're coming to this university and you're coming to this business school to turn you into a world-class professional. And in order for us to turn you into a world-class professional, attitude matters as much as other stuff. I'm going to show you something now about our four core values, and you will get copies of this PowerPoint. And if you want to go and have a look at these later, by all means, do it. But you'll see why I think it's important that you see this. The most important part of excellence, which is our first core value, is the last sentence there. No more school community member should accept poor performance from either themselves or others. And please, I want you to know that this is a value we all hold very, very closely. I want you to expect excellence from the faculty. I want you to expect excellence from the staff. But as importantly, I want you to expect excellence from each other because you're going to discover as I talk, teamwork is a very important part of everything we do. And we have to have excellence from all of us for each and every one of us to be successful. So when you hear the word excellence, faculty, staff, and students. And if we really are going to give a good return to your investment, we've all got to be excellent. Integrity is as important for a different reason. You will notice that integrity is something which we deal with in some of our core values about accountability, honesty, transparency, humility, and respect for others, regardless of gender, color, creed, or identity. And equally, integrity is about being ethical. 
And I want you to know that we hold ourselves and we will hold you to the highest level of integrity, which basically means if I do something wrong, be accountable. If I've done something that people should know about, be transparent. If I'm going to be honest, you can't really have integrity unless you are honest. And then finally, it's got to be both personal and organizational. I want you to know that I hold our faculty and staff and our organization to a high level of integrity, just as we hold each and every one of you personally to a high level of integrity. Dean Bass is going to be talking to you just now about academic integrity, and that's principal to what we are doing. And please know, personal and organizational integrity is central to our school. Thirdly, teamwork. I can really talk about teamwork. I can also tell you that not one of you is going to be successful in your lives unless you know how to be a member of a team, unless you know how to be a good team player. And I will say to you, I am a member of a team. I have uh, people working around me that are a team that I have to empower for us to be successful. All of you will be working in teams with your colleagues in, in groups. But to me, the most important team is the team of two. And the team of two is that peer in your class, in a class that you are struggling with, who you see somebody that knows what's going on. And you go to them and you do them the honor of asking them to help you. I want you to know when people come and ask me for help, or when people come and ask me for an opinion, there's an honorable thing for them to ask me. And I need to deal with that as carefully as it would anything else I do. Don't be scared to ask others for help. And when somebody asks your help, don't be scared to give it. Because I can promise you, there's going to be a class, there will be a course that you will need help. And then the team of two steps up. So teamwork is central because none of us can be successful without being a, a, a good team member. Lastly, there is resilience. You may be surprised about resilience being a core value of the Moore School, but I can tell you this, it's a core value that makes all of us successful. To get through the pandemic as you had and the year that you had last year as senior and getting through all that stuff and being here today has built resilience. Equally, you're going to discover that we are going to challenge you. If you're not failing just a little, I don't think we're doing our jobs. We make you more resilient if we let you fail and then stand up again. And I don't think it's an overstatement to say being successful is about also being how you deal with failure. And dealing with failure makes you resilient. And I want all of our graduates to leave the Moore School very well educated, knowing about what they are going to be doing, but also being resilient, which means you can get knocked down and what happens? You get back up, because I can promise you that's what life is. That's why resilience is there. And notice too there where I say, knowledge informed effort from both individuals and in teams, combined with hard work sustained by resilience and done with integrity, produces enduring excellence. Those are the core values of our school. Please don't be shy to go back to this document at any time to remind yourself and know that we all hold these values very close to our hearts as individuals, as well as members of our community. Dean Bass is gonna to talk to you more about this. Just know this, it's a nine to five job you're doing. I want you to think about your schoolwork starts at nine o'clock on Monday morning and ends at 5 p.m. on Friday afternoon, just like a job. And I promise you, if you come to work with that attitude and you do that sort of thing at the university and at the Moore School, you will leave here stunningly successful. So please keep that in mind. Lastly, do the homework and be prepared. And remember, education is a participatory sport. Come to class, engage. Class choices, I'll just leave you with one idea. Take the difficult courses. Do the hard stuff. Remember who we are trying to prepare you to compete with. You may have heard I have a slight accent, right? Actually, let me just be clear on this one. I'm not the one with the accent. You're the guys with all the accent. Of course, I'm teasing on that. I'm South African. And I want you to know that I've spent my life going around the world. And I've been to India and I've been to China and I live in South Africa. And I know how happy it is when you go to the world. 
world are when they get up. They were part of the meeting because they come from a different time and a different space. But I'm going to make you more competitive than they are. So you're not only really competing with everybody around our country, you're competing with people around the world. And it's my job to make sure that when you leave here in four years' time, you are competitive. Equally know that you're not only competing with other people, you're also competing with the children. 10 or 15 years ago, a lot of the work that you would have done has now been taken over by code, software, and smart systems, which means we have to prepare you to be able to do something that machines can't do. You're going to hear me say this now, I will say it again, and I will probably bore you to death every time I see you. You must aim to leave this business to a data proficient, analytically capable, and functionally based. And what functionally based means your major. Finance, marketing, supply chain, accounting, etc. The data and analytical proficiency is put in there because data is now the language of business. There's a lot of information that's available to us from the explosion of data that we've had over the last 20 years. And we want every one school graduate to leave data proficient, analytically capable, functionally based, which means don't be scared of numbers. Don't be scared of quantitative stuff. You can do anything, provided you put your mind to it. And by the way, nobody is born with a math gene. Okay, please know that. Math is not in your DNA. Math is something, if you're not comfortable with it, that over time you can learn. And that's why you want to. So please be aware of that as you look at this. Equally, I want you to be sure to go to this document. And you'll get a copy of these PowerPoints. Just go to that link and click on it and it will come up. These are the jobs and the, uh, uh, the data on the class of, of uh, 2021. And it'll give you, for example, in the accounting major and all the others, what the major requirements are, what the average salary is, what you can do in the major. Please make sure you download this and go through all these data. I'm not going to bury the lead here. The most important data is in this is that our class of 2021 had a placement rate this year of 90%, which means nine out of 10 students that are reporting back on what they've done have got a job. Equally, they have a salary of over 58,000. Both of these are records. Those two sets of data put us squarely in the top 25 of business schools in this country. And I want you to understand, we are a top 25 business school here. We are going to be asking you to do top 25 stuff. And embedded in that is all the choices you have in your majors. I will also leave you with one last thing I want you to keep in your mind. Business analytics. There's a business analytics concentration at the Moore School that asks you to do another class as a core class in analytics. And then three other classes linked to your major to give you a concentration in business analytics. When we first offered the analytics concentration in 2017, we had seven students. In the spring of this year, we had 730 students doing analytics concentration. We expect over a thousand this spring. Please keep that in mind. And again, I'll come back to very efficient, analytically capable, functionally based. I don't think you will be prepared for a job that you will face as you go out to work unless you are data proficient, analytically capable and functionally based. Sorry, got to close it. Aren't you proud of me, Bo? I'm not messing up anything. It's astounding, isn't it? It's rare, he says. Yes, it is. Failure is an option. And please, I'm not trying to scare you here. I'm going to say to you that you're not going to fail you, but I can tell you if you don't do the work, you will fail. And we want to make sure we get you a return on that investment. We must hold you on a high standard and please make sure you do the work. Success is also about failure. I promise you, I can tell you about failure causing success. Just as much as I can talk to you about success causing failure. So please understand those are part and parcel of this. If we are not making you stretch a little bit further than you can and failing just a little, we're not doing our jobs. So be aware of that. Do the work. Don't hesitate to ask for help. Dr. Bass will talk more about that just now. I don't mind you failing. What I do mind is if you fail, you don't ask for help, and you get up, and you come back, and you build the resilience so that eventually you succeed.
When you leave this place in four years time, we want you to be business ready. We want you to be prepared for your first job. We want you to be equipped for your career. And we want you to have all those capabilities. If you want each year, I urge you keep this PowerPoint and you go back and you look at all these things and say, what are these skills? What did I build this year? Where am I? So that by the time you leave, I want you to do all this and I want you to be the human being that has all these capabilities. That's not a bad deal, right? That's what you've signed up for. I know that we uh, have the ability to help you get to this and I look forward to watching you over the next four years as you do that. Lastly, this fall is gonna be different. Obviously, because of this blessed virus is still with us, I don't think we're gonna be out of it this year. I would not be surprised if we still have some of it next year. Took us three years to get rid of the Spanish flu, by the way. And when the Spanish flu arrived in 1918, we didn't have vaccines, and it took three years to get it out of the system. It may take us a couple of years to deal with this one. We just have to learn to cope with it and be adaptable. Please be adaptable. Equally, it will pass. Show grace as we deal with this. Be your best self as you can. Work with us to help us all stay healthy. And no, that educationally, you're going to be okay regardless of what happens. What I'm hoping we won't have to show you is that this time last year, we had every class offered remote, and we can have every class offered to you live, taught by a faculty from anywhere to a student attending from anywhere. And we built that capability last year because we have a professional MBA program that's been operating like that for 20 years. If worse comes to worse, then we have to go remote. I promise you, we will go live stream remote and you will be able to attend class as long as you've got a computer and a network to connect. Hopefully we won't get to that. The only way I know how to make sure we don't get to that is where you are. Be social distant. If you get you know, worried about having COVID, call and get tested. If you are tested, isolate. And let's all be responsible so that we can all stay in class, stay in person. And we uh, as we reply. I suspect that's all I need to say. Jen, I think you're up. No, no, last point. Have fun too. This is a whole long story you're hearing from this strange man with this funny accent. Um, fundamentally, you will be having fun. You will make friends here. You will do things that are exciting. You will have to focus. You will have to make choices. You will have to work hard. But we know that you're going to have a tremendous amount of fun while you're here. Your family are proud you're here. We are proud you're here. Make us even prouder when you generate when you graduate. Before you. Up to you, Jen. Mm -hmm. Now. Good afternoon. Thank you, Dean Bruce, for laying the foundation. I'm part two of this afternoon together, and it is a delight to be here and to see your faces, masked, but to see your faces, and uh, just to be with all of you. It's, it's been such, really, probably a year and a half since I've seen this many people all at once, and it's very exciting. My name is Jan Bass. I'm the Associate Dean of Undergraduate Programs and also a Professor of Economics. And I'm here to talk to you today about your journey, especially your freshman year, or really over your four years. I'll talk to you also as a professor about the nuts and bolts of academic success and some of the yellow lights and red lights along the way. So you all know that your starting class is tomorrow, Thursday, August 19th, first day of college class. You have a schedule, your fall schedule, probably looks something like what's on the left there. This is what the academic schedule will be for your year. It'll look something like this. If you have a different, um, something different, that's okay. That may be the case for you. But you'll see that there are seven classes that are starred. Some of those with the asterisks are business classes like the accounting, the management science, the econ 221, the principles of micro or the principles of macro. And some of them are not non-business classes, the Englishes and the math, and the stat class. So a normal load of classes in college is five classes a semester. 
So over the academic year, you will have completed 10 classes and been one fourth of the way through your four years here. So what I wanted to talk to you about was those asterisk classes, the seven of them. As freshmen, we have what are called progression requirements. These are requirements that you all have to satisfy by the end of your freshman year in order to continue as a more school student, to continue in the business school. So what you're required to do over the year is to earn a C or better in any of the asterisk classes and so it's not an or statement and have a GPA of a 3.0 or higher. There's no rounding allowed. So if your GPA is 2.97, that doesn't cut it. And unfortunately you won't be joining us in the next year. So just be aware that these are progression requirements that apply to you this first year. Keep those at the forefront of your mind. Some mornings when you uh, wake up and don't feel like coming to class, Remember these because they'll help you to stay on track. The syllabus. So um, the syllabus is an essential document. It's really a, a way of thinking about a contract between you and the faculty member teaching the class. And you know, I've, I'm a professor of economics. I've taught classes in economics for many years. Um, the joke in the economics department was, the, was that I was the one who had the longest syllabus. It was like 10 to 12 pages. I don't know if my students read all of it, but sometimes when they ran into trouble, I would tell them to point to the syllabus to look at what the policy was. So the, um, the importance is for me to tell you is that you really need to look at that syllabus document and be aware of certain things, especially some of the things that I've highlighted here. Due dates are critical. You'll have due dates for quizzes, exams, and assignments. Be responsible for those. I would recommend that when you get the syllabus, you enter or record those dates in whatever device, or whatever way helps you to remember and note when they are. Recheck, recheck your calendar. Periodically look through it and see what's coming up and remember the dates. The reason why is that misses can mean a zero on that quiz, test, or assignment, and that can impact your grade. Speaking of grades, the grading formula is also important. The grading formula is really a roadmap for evaluating your performance in the course. It's critical that you understand how that grading formula works. I've seen students over the years who have not quite understood exactly how the formula worked. And as a consequence, perhaps they thought they needed to make an 80 on the final exam in order to at least get a C in the class. But they didn't understand the formula. They got the 80 and they didn't end up with a C, they ended up with the worst grade. So it's really important that you know how it works. Um, in college, most of your grades are based on a weighted average, not a straight average. So if you have four exams, it may not just be a straight average of those four exam scores. It may be a weighted average with a higher weight, say 35% put on the final exam and the remaining 65% spread across the first three. So understand how the grading formula works, play around with it, put in your grades as you get grades to kind of see where you stand and monitor yourself, especially as you move through the semester. The syllabus often has a lot of course policies. Those course policies are typically devised because faculty over the many years of teaching have had experience with various student situations and develop policies for each of those. So there may be an attendance policy, be familiar with it. There may be a late, late work policy. If you turn your homework in late, how many points might you get deducted or might you get a zero? There may be participation grades. Be aware of those things. And look at that contract as a document and keep it, keep it with your um, course materials. So I wanna talk about academic success. And it's probably pretty obvious that academic success depends on a variety of things. One of those is what you do in the classroom. It's also what you do outside of the classroom. 
and how and what resources you use to help you learn. So let's talk about in the classroom. Dean Bruce mentioned that um, your college uh, classwork can be treated like a nine to five job. So if we break things out, um, each class that you may have that you have on your schedule is a commitment of 2.5 hours a week. You all probably have five classes, so that's about 12.5 hours a week devoted to coming to class. And I hope when you look at it from that perspective, on a rainy day when you don't feel like getting up and coming to class, you think about this isn't a large time commitment, but it is essential. And it's going to be very important to you and your GPA, because I can tell you coming to class is one of the most significant and important things that you can do in your college career. Regular attendance, staying engaged, paying attention while you're in class, taking notes on, uh, on what the professor says, not just recording what's up on the slides, but adding, editing, including. If the professor repeats something, that's a sign that it's very important. And so note it, highlight it. Um, material that's covered in the class typically is the most important. After all, as a professor, we only have uh, 14 weeks to teach you what we think to be the most significant and important things for you to know going out the door of our classroom and moving eventually on to a career. So don't miss out by missing class. Come to class. Outside of class, the expectation is to spend five hours per class a week studying. And what that means over the, with five classes is 25 hours a week. If you add that to the 12.5 hours of class time, you basically have a full-time job. As far as studying goes, um, a number of things to do. And one of my favorite tips to give students when they ask for advice is to recopy your notes within a day or two after class. Because recopying your notes enables you to sit quietly and rethink what you learned while you were sitting in class. It allows you to elaborate, to go back to the textbook and perhaps incorporate more information, to highlight color or underline, to put an asterisk by it saying, I need to ask the professor about this because I don't understand it. It, it really helps when it comes time to studying for the exam to have a really clean, clear, organized set of notes rather than perhaps what you were trying to write as fast as you could in class. So read, highlight, and annotate text. Rework and practice problems. If you get homework problems, take a homework problem and alter the numbers. Change it up a little bit. If it's an economics question, Change the question from being about what happens when demand increases to what happens when supply increases. And then you can take your answers to your professor during office hours and show them what you did and ask them if you got the right answer or not. And that's another way of learning. And then also try to find a quiet space to study. There are many other resources for academic success in the Moore School as well as across campus. So of course, the biggest resource in the Moore School is faculty, those who teach you. Our faculty hold office hours. Those office hours may not be convenient for you. If they're not, email them and ask for a different time to meet with them. Faculty, after all, are the ones teaching you the material. They're experts and specialists in the content that they're teaching, and they have a lot to offer you. Don't be afraid. Uh, class teaching assistants. Many of our classes have teaching assistants, TAs, who were former students. We may have teaching assistants, typically might be a junior or senior who has been through the course, has worked with the professor, and knows the content. They're also a resource to go to. In the business school, we also have a center for business communications. They can help you with written projects, presentations, and so on. And then across campus for all students is the Student Success Center. The Student Success Center offers peer tutoring. Peer tutoring are students who work for the Student Success Center who have taken, say, an economics class and they apply to work at the Student Success Center. 
When a student comes to the student success center who's having trouble in the class, they will assign that peer tutor to work with you. Supplemental instruction, those are TAs, like a TA, they're called a supplemental instructor that's attached to the class. And then they also offer consultations because especially coming in as freshmen, you may have some test anxiety or um, you may have some time management issues that you feel like are holding you back from learning and seeing the grades that you'd like to see. And they'll consult with you on that. So Dean Bruce went through the four core values of the business school and you saw that integrity was one of those. It's also very important to think about integrity in terms of academics. At the Moore School, we hold faculty and staff um, uphold the, the value of academic integrity and we expect you to act with academic integrity. You may have gotten copies of the honor code and been asked to become familiar with it. But I'd like to point out that there are um, that honor code violations do have consequences, and those consequences can range from probation to suspension to expulsion, a grade penalty of an F, or there, there may be put on your transcript a notation, which employers or grad schools may see. So I do see the academic integrity reports. Reports. I'm aware of violations, and I know that they do happen. And I would ask you to please, as freshmen starting out, please steer clear of any academic integrity and violations and act with integrity and abide by the honor code. Your academic success depends on your GPA. You all know that. And your GPA, if you think about where it's going, why you're here, ultimately you're here to get an, a job, to get that full-time first job, start a career. How do you get it? You get educated. What your education in some sense is reflected by is your GPA. So what is your GPA impact? It impacts your progression in the Moore School. Like I said at the very beginning, freshman year, you have to make a 3.0 or higher and C's in those seven courses in order to remain in the business school. Your GPA also impacts any financial aid or scholarships you may have, so be aware of that as well. Uh, internships and employment prospects are also positively impacted by a higher GPA. GPA signals a student who has a great knowledge base and is probably a hardworking student. And then your GPA impacts graduation. In, in order to graduate, you have to have a GPA of 2.8, that's for sophomore, junior, senior year, your average has to be a 2.8 or higher in order to graduate. And you have to have gotten C's, C's in every one of your business school classes or higher. So I'm not setting that as the minimum, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to encourage you to shoot for the A's, of course, but know that you can't get below a C in your business classes. Some important academic uh, dates, the advising appointment will be coming up shortly. That will be advisable for your spring semester, so do not miss it. Uh, Wednesday, August 25th, a week from today, is the last day to withdraw from class without receiving a W, which would be put on your transcript. And then Wednesday, November 3rd, it's a little far uh, out from uh, this day, but it's the last day to withdraw from class without getting a WF being put on your transcript. Problem with the WF is that once it's on your transcript, it is counted as part of your GPA and included in your GPA as an F, which is a zero. So it, it will pull the average GPA down. Major decision. Dean Bruce showed you the majors report for our students who graduated in 2021. We had some great success with our students despite COVID. Some essential resources, obviously the majors report is an excellent place to start because you can see how majors align with career opportunities and starting salaries. So please avail yourselves of that. You'll be getting a little, uh, like an index card with the QR code on it that links you to the majors report. We have our own in-house office of career management. 
that also can work with you on helping you decide majors, as well as many other ways they can work with you to prepare yourself for applying for internships and ultimately in four years time for that first full-time job. But you can also talk to uh, your professors and undergraduate advisors about what your interests are and what opportunities there are in terms of careers. Dean Bruce and I love to meet with students. We love to talk about uh, with you about how you're doing, what your interests are, where you see yourself going and help give you some guidance and good advice. And family and friends as well, your mom and dad may be able to help you out as well. And they know you, they may know what your talents and innate abilities are and give you some guidance there. And then um, we also have an Office of Career Management in the business school. They help guide students through internships and the job search process. There, we have an excellent, uh, fantastic team that works with you, helps you write uh, your resume, interviewing skills, networking, and they're there also for not only professional development, but personal development. So that's the end of my shtick. We're gonna have some time for questions and answers. But as I would say to my kids, as they would go out the door, be good, do good, and help each other. Thank you. Two of our student ambassadors here are going to be bringing mics around for questions. Are any people in the. Uh, 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 two of our ambassadors are going to go mics here, and those of you that are in the chat box can be in the chat box for questions. The problem is coming. Hello, my name is Daniel Edwards from Provo, South Carolina. I'm from Pittsburgh. My question was a question about business analytics as a major. Um, is that more like a focus, uh, or do you recommend like helping out with like a economics major, or just focusing on like that? It's a concentration, it's not a major. Okay. If you do the business analytics concentration, you have to do an additional core class. And then three other courses that are connected to your major. And it relates to building that data efficiency, the analytical capability, and the functional space. That's the concentration. And it can end up preventing you from doing other minors, because obviously you're doing more work, but that also depends upon your AP, how much space you've got, etc. But it's it's more work than more students. Now, let me add that we have nine, uh, we have nine majors, so the analytics concentration can be paired with any one of the nine majors. Okay. I don't need a mic. Uh, okay. I'm Shay. I'm from uh, Massachusetts, and I was wondering, like, what grade are, are uh, kids taking the uh, analytics classes? What grade? What like freshman sophomore year? Typically junior. Typically yeah, because they've got it in one of the science can I do one? Are you using the junior? Okay, thank you. Okay, welcome from Matt. You won't feel that good right now, but let me tell you in the winter, you're gonna be much happier. <laughs> if we have to recruit faculty from the northeast, we bring them down here in January. So no break at all.
Well, folks, we passed your first test. Thank you for coming. You were invited. We don't get any false credit for this, but it's a very fine thing to do. Please do me a favor. Any of you colleagues that have not come to this presentation, give them copies of the PowerPoint, tell them what we told them, and make sure that the peers understand what it is we're trying to do. Still no question? So there's one over there. Hi, I'm Ellen from Charleston. I was wondering what grades somebody had given the last semester who would help other students at the student resource center or anything. So if you're yeah. helping somebody what grade. Yeah, so it, it, you're asking if you want to work at the student success center as a peer tutor. Is that that the question? Um, I don't know if I do ask for help for a grade. You're, you're getting help from a student who has been in the course prior to you, so probably a sophomore, junior, or senior who has taken the course and has done well in it. And let me just add, it's a wonderful source of help because typically it's somebody that's just a little bit ahead of you, that's very familiar with the material, but knows what to do. I would also add those of you who want to understand majors, one of the smartest things you can do is to get to know a junior or a senior in a major. Ask him about it. What are they going to do? Where do they want to go? Why did they choose it? And become an informed consumer over your freshman year. Do your best to learn as much as you can about the majors that are interesting to you. And juniors and seniors in that major are the best people to ask. So just keep that in mind, apart from the field. Uh, my name is Ajaya. I'm from Chicago. Um, to my understanding, there is business fraternities. How beneficial are they for networking and career growth? Checking out. You want to answer that? Yeah. So I'm in the Alpha Kappa Psi, which is one of the websites for within the business school, but the one I'm in is open all majors. I'm going to have a bias answer, so I'm going to chime in. But I found it super helpful because it's academic and social. And the biggest thing I think what you just mentioned with mentorship is that's something where if you think about it, you join as a freshman, the people on you now know what the things you've been like consulting on are not really jobs or associates and that higher levels you can invest in base and trying to get to higher analysts. So that's like if you're working the long term, it's a very good option. Um, I personally really enjoy it and have a lot of good options. Um I'm trying to do this. And then from an academic standpoint, it's nice because in every class there's someone from the business community in everyone. So we have to see their study groups and stuff. So I really enjoyed it and I love them. And if you want to talk to anyone about them, all the student ambassadors usually in them. I think only one too. I know. I'm going to say something excellent. I don't agree with what Allison said. Um, you have to check out my page. Somebody joins it and it's a really nice mentorship. For example, for seniors, I can ask about what class I should take, what I should take and when. And also what I should do to get to the wrong major class. And I can get into Instagram if you look at the more school, they always repost every business fraternity. So that helps when I do go on Instagram if you have other questions, you can just message any student or if someone's always like checking it. That's what I really love about it. I can only recommend it. Number one, highly recommend it. Other questions, just one other. I'm Carson from Brunswick, Virginia, and I was just going to touch upon the pressure of the example. On my, on the PowerPoint, click it on there, download the PDF you'll get. You're also going to get a card with a key code on it to be able to get it on there. I promise you, you're going to be flat at that stuff, so you'll be able to find it. If you can't, you know. Any others? No questions from the other function. Okay, so let's quickly talk about the January chapter. Okay, so uh, the business bash is tomorrow. Yeah, business bash. Oh, yeah. so, oops, you know sorry. Wrong one. Business bash tomorrow. You pick up there tomorrow, you'll get one of these. Freshman year t-shirts. 
125 if you're small, room 126 if you're medium, 124 if you're large, 123 if you're extra large. You'll also get the, the QR card with the major's report on it. So when you leave here, if you want a small shirt like that or a medium or a large, go to those classes. Business dash tomorrow, wear this. I will be arriving here tomorrow with my suit pants and this thing. You're not allowed to take it. <laughs>